Hello, welcome to Hook Legends and thanks for watching today's video. Now, today I have a very informative video lined up for you. Um, and today's, the, the focus of today is I want to do a video in response to some of the inquiries I've received from um, some of our subscribers. And um, some of our subscribers have, have went out and purchased electronics or they already had the electronics and then really didn't know how to use it. And you know, I think electronics are probably one of the most um, underutilized pieces of equipment I see on a lot of boats. People get them and they just don't take the time to figure them out. Now, I've also heard some people say, uh, electronics are overrated, you don't need electronics for well, I just want to give you my thoughts on that. So, if you're fishing in a lake that's probably, I'm going to just say 50 acres or less, you can probably get by without electronics. You can troll for crappie, cast for crappie, I mean, you can probably figure out the patterns in a small body of water like that. But if you're fishing in a lake, now I'm down on Lake Tackle, and this lake, um, the smallest um, size estimates I've seen for this lake was around 8,500 and something acres. This is a pretty decent sized lake. And, um, you know, crappie are a species of fish that they relate to cover and structure. Structure being the bottom contours, your ledges, your drop off, um, and cover is anything that's been added, whether it was man made, trees falling in the water, rocks. Um, that's cover. So, crappy relate to structure and the cover. And a lot of times, you're just kind of fishing blindly in the dark if you're not using any electronics. Now, can you catch fish without electronics? Absolutely, you can. As a matter of fact, when I'm fishing in a smaller lake, less than 50 acres, you know, I have electronics on the boat, but it's not the electronics that I have on this boat that I use down here in Lake Tackle. And by the way, I'm in my pontoon boat today. Um, we're experiencing a heat wave here in Florida. I've been sitting here under this shed maybe for an hour trying to get my courage up to go out there. Um, warnings I see around the country right now and some other places where they're saying we might break some records today, you know, as far as all time heat waves. So I'm going to be a little bit careful. I'm probably not going to stay out there very long trying to catch any fish. Um, but today's video is I want to show you how to use your side imaging to find crappie schools. You know, I'm not going to tell you where to use it at yet. That's going to be another video. Um, if you were to ask me, what do I think the, um, probably the number one skill that's the most important for a crappie angler, it's um, without a doubt is the ability to find the fish. So if you're going to be successful as a crappie angler, you need to be able to do what the pros call eliminate water. You just can't come out here in 8,500 and something acres and, and drift around day in and day out for a year, season in, season out, without having that skill set of eliminating water. This is a large lake, but there's a large portion of this lake that does not contain crappie. And you want to be focused on the portion of this lake that does contain crappie. So in a few minutes, I'm going to push out from under this slip. I'm going to let this bimini top up here to pre protect me from some of this um, sun that's beaming down. And I'm going to go out and hopefully get some footage. I've never taken footage before. Um, off of my screen with the side imaging, but I plan to do some of that today for the first time. Now, I'm using a Hummingbird Helix 10 um, for this exercise, but it really, you know, what I'm, the skills I'm going to talk to you about developing today, it doesn't matter whether you're using a Hummingbird, Lawrence, Garmin, it doesn't matter which, or, or other vendors that are out there, it doesn't really matter as long as they, um, the sonar that you use as long as it has some side scan side imaging functionality built into it so um once again i'm using the hummingbird helix 10 you know if you're looking to purchase some electronics get what your budget can afford you know the helix from my understanding the helix 10 and the helix 7 does about the same thing i think the screen's just bigger now i, I could be wrong with that i didn't go out and check all the specifics here before i made that statement but I think they have about the same functionality on it. It's just the screen size, so and you can probably get it at a um, much more economical price um, than what I paid for this Helix 10. So um, once again, get what you can afford. Um, I would like to say thanks for all subscribers and um, guys. If you like these videos and you're not subscribed, or if you want to see more and be notified more of these type of videos that I'm going to be doing, do me a favor right now. Reach up, click subscribe and like. Make sure you click the notification bell. So you'll be alerted when future videos are released. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and plug up everything and power up my units. Let this bimini top up. 
and see if I can go out here and find a couple of schools and um, you know help you get a better understanding of what I do when I go out to try to find these schools and we'll be back in a snap talk about a setting here so you want to click menu and once again depending on which graph um, brand you're using um, you know you have to look at your owner's menu to go in there and configure it but basically I'm traveling about right now half a mile an hour you always want to set your chart speed to round I round up to the next nearest number so um now I was going probably about 1.4 1.5 I think and um, rounding up would be two now normally I use my gas motor for this and I go about 2.5 um, 2.5 or 2.6 speed and um, I set that number to number three but you definitely want your chart speed to be slightly higher than whatever speed you're traveling at in order to get a good clear picture now I also like to I also like to set my side range right and left I like to set it on 60 um, because eventually you'll get used to what you're seeing look there's a school of um there's a school of bait fish coming up right there now when you're adjusting your sensitivity I'm going to click menu here again two important settings is sensitivity and contrast and these are usually pretty close to each other but you know when you're when you're out um the sensitivity and the contrast are usually set pretty close to each other and I might have my sensitivity set at 12 these these two settings you'll need to constantly adjust depending on how hard or soft or how deep or sediment in the water um, of the water that you're fishing. So the contrast, I want to show you how to set that contrast. My contrast is on 6 and I'm going to increase the contrast. You see how directly beneath the boat where that signal is hitting, you see how it turned white. What you want to do there is you want to turn that contrast down. You want to turn that contrast down notice the white portion starts to go away you see that and what i like to do is have just a teeny tiny bit so you can see just a little bit or you can go ahead so you don't hardly see any at all that's how you know when you get it properly set now if you have it so it's too bright like this and i started out i used to use mine that way but i found out that's probably not ideal you want to go ahead until you see just a teeny tiny bit or one click more none at all so um look at there there's some shadows Ooh, hit the camera but you see those shadows right in there look at those shadows in there that's fish that's fish right in there those shadows so as you can see th see these shadows over here these shadows the fish are right over in here and they're catching now some of these are stumps and debris and stuff that's over there but um right in here if you see those little blips little there's some little tiny white dots don't know if you can see them on the screen and there's some fish here right up off the bottom in there and um that is the fish so it looks like i'm going to go over it again i'm going to turn around and go over that again and go a little bit to the to the other side see if i can go directly up top across the top of those fish but there's a ton of fish there's a lot of debris structure over there um, it's the structure and cover the river channels may be about i'm just guessing 30 to 50 feet from that flat i think we're going to have less glare coming this way i believe and we're going to go ahead and do the look at there this is going to give you a good look at it now once again this is a this demonstration is supposed to be focusing on your your side view but just just to verify and make sure that you really know that this is fish i wanted you to see you see these dots down in here see those blips now it's probably some shad in there mixed in there but there's definitely some fish over there see that and I'll come back through and verify this with some live scope. But look at here, guys. Look at that. All of that is fish. Now I want to go back to um, this. I'm going to highlight an area here. See that? That's all the fish we passed over. Expand it. You see them there? Ooh, look at here coming up. Look at there. So I'm gonna go across one other spot. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna fish for a little bit at first, then I'm gonna come back and go over another spot. Now there's a lot of fish here in this area. 
couple of indicators. If you look, you can see the shadows of the fish. And if you look right up in here, see if I can expand it. You can actually see these little white dots. See them right there? That's fish. Now, not all of them are huge, but look at there. There's fish in there. Look in the shadows and you can even see fish. So I'm going to come back, circle around, and see if I can hit a few of these fish. Look at that, but look at all those shadows. I mean, now, what's over here is stumps. Let's kind of, all right, you know, I've been fishing this for years, guys. <clears throat> I haven't been able to tell if these are tires or stumps. I suspect this is probably some kind of stump. Tons of fish over here on this point. I mean, here you can see these are suspended up off the bottom. Let me give you a quick look at that. See that? Those are suspended up off the bottom crappie. Look at these shadows over here. These shadows are from fish that are closer in over this way. Look at that. Look at those dots right there. There's some fish stacked in over there also behind on that side on the shady side of that log which is where you would expect them to be you know and then over here where you see all of these clouds just look at the fish that's you know right in there let me do see if i can do a screenshot okay go through there one more time and then I mean just a ton right over here right there see him right there now I'm moving about 1.5 miles per hour so I need to come in here and set my chart speed to about 2 I always try to round up to the next nearest highest number so Just look over here guys, ton of fish over there. Ton of fish. I mean this point has structure. Look at there. Just look at there. I mean right here is what I want to come back and explore. Right there. You see that? You see those fish stacked in there? See them? That's what we want to be right there, guys. I'm headed back. I kind of want to give you one last look at that same spot. So you can see the um, the side scan along with the down image. And so you can see the fish that are sitting on top of that. All right, look in the look down here in the lower part of the screen. You'll see a lot of um, stacked up crappie as well as some other type of fish. Um, a lot of times when you're in an area that contains quality size crappie, you'll find garfish, bass, obviously lots of bait fish so um it's not yet it's not that you're just looking at 100 percent crappie here there's always a a varied mixture of fish types in this particular area now look if you look up there towards the upper part of the screen you'll see a bunch of white dots up there those are the fish that correspond to the fish you see on the structure down below
Guys, this place is, I mean, it's just loaded with crappie up here. A little nilly, right there. Right there, look at the shadows being cast from these fish, guys. You see that? Well, now let me go with that. Back, there were some fish there. Okay, I hope you found some of the information provided in this video helpful, and I hope it results in you putting more fish in the boat. Now, I had some, I had several issues out here with audio, video. I also had a power trim issue here on my boat. So, um, I was able to salvage a, a few of the um, video clips of actually catching some fish. So, um, I'm going to take you away with a couple of those clips and a very beautiful sunset so i'll see you next time thanks for watching hook legends